My name is Rosalind Dale, and I'm at North Carolina A&T State University, so uh, one of the 1890 programs. Um, and today I'm experiencing a bit of a paradigm shift myself, a personal paradigm shift, as my um, one and only child turns 20. So, whoa. I thought I was still a spring chicken, but apparently not. <laughs> so, um, and so I thought this uh, clip here was really befitting of that, uh, not just from this, my own personal moment today, but just as I stepped into the role of a new administrator, I felt like, oh wow, what am I getting into? Did I really say yes to this? Did I commit to this? Is it too late? Can I go back and tell the dean? Uh, no, I think you might have picked the wrong person. Uh, but uh, anyway, I did commit to um, the interim role a couple years ago, about two years ago in August, of being the extension administrator for our program. And I committed uh, right after a number of administrative changes had occurred, not only within extension, but also at the college level. Uh, also at a time where I think we were on the radar, if you will, of our chancellor and provost and folks wanting to see some changes within our organization. And so uh, given all of that and knowing what we were facing, um, it really posed uh, a real concern or question for me uh, as well as the leadership team. And so as the millennials kind of alluded to uh, yesterday, a lot of things have changed in the landscape across extension, uh, across the last uh, certainly 100 years, but even in the last 20 years, uh, as I said, you know, when I think about uh, where I was 20 years ago and what extension looked like and the technologies and different things that we were doing, it's changed tremendously over the last 20 years. And so the young people like to refer to things as old school and new school. Uh, and so uh, we, we kind of have this new school way of, of doing things now. And so with that, uh, we know we have to do things a lot differently than, than what they were. But then also, I have to keep in mind in terms of the audience that we serve, because we serve limited resource communities across the state of North Carolina, that some of the old school ways still may be re very relevant for the community. And so we have to have that balance between uh, the new way, if you will, of doing things, but also keeping in mind that people may not be ready or may not have the resources for um, some of those new ways of doing things. And so just to give you a bit of uh, context in terms of our organization, because we are a uh, smaller organization compared to some of my colleagues here, uh, maybe not New Hampshire quite as much, but compared to some of the other colleagues here. So again, we are 1890 uh, program. We have the second largest amount of funds in terms of the 1890 system. And so total funds are just roughly around $11 million that we operate with, uh, which includes our federal appropriation and then our state um, matching funds, which aren't quite 100% of our federal appropriation, and then funds we receive from the county and then other external grants that we get. Uh, and so it averages generally about $11 million a year that we operate with. Uh, our staff, uh, we kind of get an ebb and flow in the staff, but right now just under 100 staff members and 52 of those staff members are at the county level. Uh, our county presence, uh, we have staff in about half of the county centers across the state of North Carolina. And so we um, like to say that although we only have staff in about half of the counties, we certainly uh, hope and try to make sure the best we can to make sure our programs are available in all 101 county centers across the state of North Carolina. So again, as I took on this new role, I considered it that I was taking a journey, right? A journey that I had never been on before. And so in the days of new technology, we think of when we go someplace we've never gone before, the first thing we do is get out our smart device and Google, and we get the GPS going so we can get some directions on where to go, right? And so um, me not being a native of North Carolina, I can certainly tell you when I first moved to the state, one of the first things that I asked about is, do we have GPS in the vehicles? Uh, because I'm gonna need that to be able to get around the state if I'm, not ex if I'm expected to get there, get there on time and not be lost every single time I go out. 
And so I took this role on in the same sort of a way. I need a GPS. I need to know where we're going. Um, and not only do I need to know where we're going, the organization needs to know where we're going, the people that we serve need to know where we're going, uh, the uh, staff need to know where we're going. Uh, and so in, in um, order to do that, we went on a journey to develop our strategic plan. And so as you can see in the background of this road that we're on, I could see that the, the future was bright. And so it wasn't a uh, storm, if you will, in the, in the background or, or any um, sort of hesitation, if you will. But the journey started out with um, us listening to our constituents around uh, the state to see what it is that we needed to do to learn from them what we had been doing well, but also what we had maybe been missing the mark on and what they wanted to see uh, from us. And so we took a couple of tours with our dean, our provost, and our chancellor and kind of took them out and uh, had an opportunity for them to talk with staff, to talk with our end users, either uh, actual or potential end users, so we could hear from them in terms of what it is that we could be doing uh, better for them. And so uh, that journey took us about uh, six, maybe nine months to complete. And at the end of that uh, is our Mission Possible strategic plan. So our strategic plan is um, developed with, was developed with these five national and state priorities in mind, small scale agriculture development, natural resource sustainability, food safety and security, nutrition and chronic disease prevention, and youth, family, and community well-being. And as we looked at those, we wanted to kind of take that down to another level and really look at the issues that were facing the limited uh, resource populations that we were serving. And so we identified these nine issue areas that uh, kind of focus our programming efforts. And certainly before that, uh, we, and, and this may seem like a lot to people, and it is still um, a significant amount, but what we really wanted to make sure is that we were being, um, we're gonna, we were gonna be able to set ourselves up to best serve the clients that we were intended to work with. And so we could have easily taken some of these things out, and I know others around the country have narrowed down their programs to make sure that they can really focus in on a few things. But one of the things that was really key for us, as an example, financial management, uh, our colleagues at NC State had uh, taken that off the table, if you will, as a program area that they were gonna emphasize, uh, emphasize. And so for us, given who our population is, we know that we could not take financial management away from our uh, programs that we would offer. And so you see all of the programs listed there. I won't. Um, repeat those, but you can see them listed there. And so the other thing that we looked at in terms of our strategic plan is coming up with a set of strategies that would drive the work regardless of the program that or the issue that we were working on. And so these uh, six strategies are the ones that we have outlined in our plan. Uh, increase the use of technology uh, around marketing and communications, the program development aspect and evaluation, aligning our staff uh, around the issue areas as well as making sure they have professional development to support them, expanding our collaborations and partnerships across the state, and then taking a real good look at the organization itself and making sure that we were uh, growing the capacity for the organization uh, as well. And so our strategic plan was just launched in August of 2016. And so we've uh, been in it uh, just over one full year. And um, one of the things that I wanna say, as you can probably see by what I have on the screen, nothing is really new about the programs that we were looking at. But what uh, the strategic plan uh, did for us uh, and continues to do for us, it, it helps to focus and gets everyone on the same page. And so everyone is clear about the direction of the organization. And it makes it really easy when people are seeking to do something, uh, does it fit? You know, when someone says, I want to do X, Y, Z, does it fit the direction that we're trying to go as an organization? Does it fit the direction uh, or the needs that our audiences have, um, you know, shared with us? 
So just briefly, some of the accomplishments that, I, that we've uh, seen in the last year, and I won't go over all of these, I'll just share a few. Uh, one, in terms of communications area, we've refreshed our brand, um, and you'll, yeah, I don't, I don't think I have a copy of it in here, but we've done that along with the co-brand for the two institutions. We've also refreshed our individual brand uh, to kind of update it and, and uh, bring it to 2017. We're doing a lot in terms of adding additional marketing materials and such. Uh, program development was an area that was really key for us, and so we've really uh, had a lot of intense work going on in the last year around um, instructional design and development, and so all of our specialists and associates have attended uh, a number of workshops, and our current associate administrator lives, breathes, sleeps, eats, program instru I mean, uh, instructional design, and so every day she's beating them over the head with that, and so that really will hopefully help us in terms of the work that we need to, to do. We've developed an onboarding program. Um, one of the marketing things that we have going on now, um, it, it, another thing I should mention is, is that regardless of the funding source, and so th this bus ad that you see here is for our SNAP Ed program, we call it Try Healthy. So regardless of the funding source, we expect that all of our efforts will align to the strategies that we have. And so around our, um, the city that we're in, Greensboro, we have these bus ads that are uh, not only visibly seen on the bus, but education also takes place inside of the bus because there are messages that go along with these ads that are on the bus. And so as patrons are riding the bus, they can hear the message about uh, nutrition education in, in this uh, example. Some of the other um, accomplishments that we've had, um, we've really been looking at our staff, we've developed a staffing plan, and really looking at how we can increase the number of ag agents. And then some of the other things that we've been doing, including uh, making sure that our staff are getting ready to be the next generation of leaders within the organization. And so making sure that they are participating in some of the leadership development opportunities that are available, like LEAD 21 and some of the other uh, events that are happening around the system as well. So year two, these are some of the things that we're looking uh, ahead uh, to finalizing our uh, staffing plan. We are under development right now for a STEM mobile uh, bus, and so we really feel uh, strongly about when we develop programs that we really need to bring a lot of resources to the community, again, because of the communities that we serve, we know we need to bring the resources. We can't just develop a curriculum, train staff, and hand that curriculum off. We also need to to have the resources that will support that uh, program with it. And so that's one of the new things we have going on. Uh, and finally, I'll mention, uh, mention uh, state matching funds. Our, our university has put that as a priority and that's something that we're working on a lot right now in terms of making sure that the state of North Carolina um, provides us a 100% match of our funds. Currently, we get about 85% of the funds that we should have, and so that will help obviously tremendously to be able to grow our programs. And so that's it for me. Thank you. Awesome.